My name is Steve Alberts, and we're with Colonial Hills, and this is the Family Passions Podcast, where we talk about how to keep your family engaged in spiritual realities, and we call that discipleship. So for summertime is approaching, and uh, I have Andy Vaughn, and here, we are here to talk about family vacations, and that aspect of keeping our kids and our family focused on what spiritual realities are around us during the vacation. And Andy, I brought you here because you are a vacation uh, nut, nut. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, but tell us real quick just about what your why why you do what you do. Well, we decided a long time ago that we wanted to carve out time away from our house where we could plug in as a family. Mm-hmm. And you know, when you're at home, you can have the best expectations for your weekend. Like we're going to go to the park, we're going to do this, this, and the next thing you know, the garage is broken, and you realize the grass needs to be cut, and time just gets robbed away from your plan. And before you know it, it's Sunday evening, and you've had very little time mm-hmm. to really enjoy your family. So we decided that we wanted to try to go somewhere once a month. And we try to stick to that. Sometimes it's six weeks. But that time away is is very valuable. I'm, I'm a firm believer that families that pray together stay together yep, yep. and families that play together stay together oh, wow, yeah. because you build bonds while you're out doing this stuff. Mm-hmm. I mean, you, you get a, a closeness that you may not get at home because so many distractions are at your house. Right. So when you say away, what are you talking about? Well, for us, we like to go camping. And I, let me back that up. It's glamping. It's with a travel trailer. <laughs> so, I mean, I have four females under my roof, so, so a tent wasn't going to happen. Right, right. right. So we just, we, we plan stuff. I have, I usually have the next 10 months to 12 months already planned out in advance. And wow. We usually only let the kids know about certain trips. Because as they were younger, they would drive you bananas saying, where are we going? When are we going? Mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. and just nonstop. Um, but that can also be used as a tool that say, listen, if you guys can't act right, <laughs> we can take this trip away. <laughs> and we actually did use that one time, which we had to cancel the trip anyway. But we let them get to where they were acting really bad and said, that's it. The trip is gone. Wow. So you can use it as a parenting tool. Sure. I don't advise that. <laughs> right, but, right. Because uh, you, you want to go. Absolutely. I'm more excited than they are a lot of times. But um, so, yeah, we we try to just make it a priority to spend family time. Yeah. Yeah. So um, so your trips, you go out in in the camper um, when when you're planning a trip. uh, Is there something that you're thinking about? Are there times where you just think, okay, this trip's going to be this flavor and this trip, I know, is going to be like this kind of experience. Right. And right. so do you, do you, is there times where you're thinking, okay, because I know where we're going, I, I, I'm going to pre-think some ideas about um, what my kids are going to be exposed to and what I can teach them through it? Yes, absolutely. So, for example, uh, some of the state parks you go to, they all generally have a theme. Um, some of them are just lakes and trails. Some are canyons. Some are cliffs that you can climb. All different kinds of, of terrain. And you can base what you're going to do off of the terrain. Yeah. And, you know, there's there's opportunities everywhere you go. It doesn't matter if you go, if you're a person that likes to just go into cities and, and have your vacation there, there is still opportunities. And I'll elaborate on that by saying you're in God's creation. Mm. So wherever you're at, there is an opportunity to point out God's creation and use that as your intro into uh, disciple into your children. Yeah. And I, I shared an example with you and, uh-huh. and you want me to go ahead and share? Yeah, it I do. Yeah. Okay, I, like so, it. I like it. Uh, Addison and I, which Addison is my middle child. We were on a trail and kind of got down near this Creek and she finds this little baby frog. I mean, this frog couldn't have been a half inch long. How she even saw it. I don't know, <laughs> but she catches this frog. And as we're looking at this frog, she's just in awe of it. I mean, right. how many how many times have you really stared at a frog and right. really studied it? <laughs> right, because you usually like, put it out, put it out, put it yeah, down. Yeah, but you're like, you know, it's going to pee on, you're going to get a wart, right? right? So <laughs> anyway, we, we pick up this frog, and as we're looking at it, it really is a masterpiece. I mean, when you wow. really study a frog, and that's what we started doing, uh, we started talking about the bumps that were on it, the, the colors, the way its eyes were in somewhere in that moment it was kind of like that still small voice kind of said hey use this moment because before it never really dawned on me to use this kind of stuff Mm -hmm. so i said to her i said you know this frog is perfectly made i mean its colors and everything are just masterfully done to where 
it can hide in plain sight to where its prey doesn't see it yeah. and its predators don't see it. Unless it moves, you can't see it. Right. And it's designed for a specific job. Wow. And then I went on to say, you know, God put all that detail into this little bitty frog, but he put even more detail into you. You know, did you, did you realize that, that he cares so much about this little frog, but he cares even more about you. Wow. So if he put all that detail into the frog, how much did he put into you? You know, the Bible says that you are perfectly and wonderfully made, right, and there's no right. other like you, and there never will be another one like you. So God loves you that much, and he loves you and thinks of you so much that he sent his son, his only son, to die for you. And, man, I can still see her little face. She was just, she was so in awe. It was unbelievable. Oh, I'm getting goosebumps, yeah. Yeah, and, and, and in that little five minutes, in that little half-inch frog, I was able to, to reinforce the message of God. Yeah. And I think that that spoke louder to her than sitting at a table with a Bible book doing a devotional, right. of, especially yeah. at five years old. Sure. But, it, you know, those little moments are everywhere. So if you're going on a family trip, you don't have to sit here and plan out this Bible study, which mm-hmm. you can, obviously you can, and that may work for your family. But those little moments, sometimes they're the, they're the jewel that's in the in the rough that you and, kind of and see. you you said something that you, so you're looking at the frog and she's looking at the frog and then you felt you felt a stirring in your heart right and i think a lot of times we as parents we we feel that mm-hmm. and we don't act on it right and so maybe even like on vacation time is to say this is a time where i'm going to be really open and i'm just going to do what what god asked me to do in that moment right and that's so, exactly right. so that's, that's a really cool. And then you also said, uh, you were kind of leading out to, it doesn't have to be in a, in a campground, in a camper. Right. It can be anywhere. Say, say you're in a city. There's God's creation is everywhere. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's just an awesome sunset. I have seen a sunset at some of these state parks and being in cities that you're just absolutely breathtaking. As a matter of fact, one time we went to Vegas and somebody told me before we went to Vegas, everything there is man-made, everything. Mm-hmm. And I remember there was a sunset that just stopped you in your tracks. Mm-hmm. And I remember thinking, nope. not everything's man-made, <laughs> you know. So yeah. it's around you, and you can use those moments, whether it's a sunset or just a plant growing up out of the crack in a sidewalk. Yeah, you know, that plant is growing because God wanted it to grow there. Right, right. I mean, so it's those little moments; they're just everywhere, and you can use them to point out God and His awesome power and creation. Yep. Uh, so there's that that. Uh, uh, acrostic kiss, like kiss your family. So keep it simple, stupid. Right. <laughs> or, right. or we would say in our family, keep it simple, keep, keep it simple, silly. Yeah. Right. You know? Right. Uh, and so looking for some of those simple things and not try to make an elaborate, have you ever tried to make something elaborate and it just bombed? Yeah. You can tell when it's more man, when you're trying to do it out of self. <laughs> yeah. Cause you're like, you start into it and you're just like, Oh, this is a disaster. Okay, and the kids, kids are looking at you like, do you need to lay down? <laughs> you know, you're like, oh, come on. You're and then you get me. mad and they yeah. get mad. And all Which, of a sudden. you know, and that's, a, that's another topic. Um, you know, when you're on these family trips, mm-hmm. there might be times that you do get mad. Because, oh, as you know, did. a lot of time that families together, think kids can start getting on each other's nerves, yeah. stuff like that. I mean, I wish I could paint this picture of every time we went camping, you know, Carla steps out of the trailer and birds land on her and deer come <laughs> running up. And not that that couldn't happen, but, sweetheart, but right. I'm just, yeah. you know, just yeah. say it. But, you know, as a dad, if you find yourself, all of a sudden you explode, you get mad at your family. Mm-hmm. There is a lesson that you can teach them even through that. And it is part of being the spiritual leader of your family. And you need to get away for a little bit and right. reset and come back and be man enough to go to them and say, you know what? I lost my cool. I- I'm sorry. Yep. Can you please forgive me? Asking for forgiveness shows them that you're not perfect and oh, it's wow. okay to make mistakes, but to own it. That's a great way to think of that. Because uh, uh, what an average family home is, let's say 1,200 to 2,400 square feet right, home. Right. How big's your trailer? Uh, man, probably 300 square feet. <laughs> so you're seriously reducing things down. So Absolutely. When, you're, when you're mad or when somebody else is mad, it, it resonates through the whole that's right. the whole environment, and so being able to um, cause, uh, so I, there's been times where we've tried to do family vacations, and a lot of times, uh, well, not a lot of times, uh, you've you, somebody gets mad, and it it has the potential of ruining the whole entire. Oh, trip. absolutely. And as the dad, if you do that, and you come in, and you say you're sorry, have a plan. And you've asked for forgiveness, wow. and say, all okay. right. 
in the next five minutes, five minutes, we're going down to the lake or we're going to get ice cream or wherever it is. Think of something you can take the family to do, but try to finish it on a positive note sure. where you come back and say, OK, um, in 30 seconds, we're fixing to have a, a family hug. So everybody, come on, bring it in, <laughs> bring it in. Dad's coming. And of course, we have a teenager and she's like, yeah. Ugh. OK, apparently the, f- the family hug is going to happen on Logan. Let's go. <laughs> everybody dogpile Logan. And all of a sudden, you've yeah. now changed the mood. Yeah. And you, you started back in the direction that you would hope to have the entire trip. Yep. So it's, it's especially if you're the father, you're called to be the spiritual leader. Right. It doesn't mean you're going to do it perfectly, mm-hmm. uh, as you know. I mean, there, things happen. But how you recover on that and how you make it right is a huge lesson to huge, teach them. Huge, absolutely. And I'm hearing you talk, and I'm I'm thinking about you know some of these um, takeaways that uh, you don't have to act. You don't have to act and keep acting on emotion that you're feeling. You absolutely. can change it. Uh, and the other one that you said was uh, have a plan for when things go wrong. Right. Um, and I, I can remember a couple of times where I would tell Shannon, "Okay, we're about ready to go," and Satan's going to attack us. There's yep. going to be something that's, that's that's not going to go right. So what are some things? So this is what I plan on doing. I plan on uh, focusing on uh, you, or I plan on focusing on what's going on. And right. So that, right. having that plan is really really cool. And you know, we start the plan. We start the, the trip off by um, doing things like we do a family hand pile. Did I already mention this before no, we but, leave? Uh-uh. So. We always do before we pull out of the driveway or before we're heading home from wherever we're going. We do a family hand pile. We all put our hands in a pile and we say a prayer. We give God thanks for the opportunity to go, uh, the ability to go, and just for his awesome creation. And then we finish it off with just saying, please let us have safe travels. Mm -hmm. And then we do a one, two, three, Jesus. So from the beginning, (laughs) you are putting that seed. You're planting that seed. This is all possible because of the gifts that God has given to us. Yeah. So, you know, and, and it may not seem like much. We've done it so many times that they, they may not even think much of it, but it's there. And if I start to pull out of the driveway, Reagan or one of them is going to say, whoa, we haven't done whoa. the hand pile. So that's what I want. And I do that every day with them before they get out of the vehicle for school, too. Oh, really? Yeah, okay. we do that yeah. every day. So it's just something that we do to kind of put Christ right in the front of their day as a reminder of who he is. Right, right. So what about your what about your wife? I mean what what is what about uh like you say you're we're the spiritual uh leaders. Right. Uh we're, we're so what I <clears throat> that doesn't mean that <clears throat> that doesn't mean obviously that I mean my wife is is way better in a lot of things than I am. Right, right. right. We all know that. But um uh we're the ones responsible. Right. Right. So that's what we mean by spiritual leader. We're the spiritual responsible ones. Right, we're, right. So um Talk about a vacation uh, with your family, but also focusing on your, just just your wife. Okay, so um, are you referring to like how we how I treat my wife yep. or her mm-hmm. role in it? Yeah, um, I try to. I, we try to give Carla a lot of a lot of space during because she needs to. You know, she needs time to. Uh, she, she's a she's got a pretty high stress job. Right, she is a NICU nurse, so uh. she has a very high stress job. So, and it's you know. Going camping, there's a lot to pack up and a lot to do mm-hmm. while you're on it. It's not like you're at a resort where you just pick up a phone and, and you can have your <laughs> meal delivered to you. Right. So we try to give her a lot of space. And as the kids were younger, it was it was harder on her. A lot of the trips, yep. you know, she had to get all the kids' clothes ready, help yep. get them dressed. And, and I would help some too. But So her attitude is more just each day, just give me some time to have my coffee and just enjoy being out in God's creation. Right. And, um, and she's also very good at, she can tell when I start getting tense and she'll say, she'll say something about that. Like, you know, Hey, are you all right? And that's kind of code. Yeah. Like I can, I can sense tension and that happens yep. on, on trips and don't feel bad when that happens, but be confident enough with your partner that you can say, Hey, you can allow them to say, Hey, you, you need to, you need to kind of just take a break for a little bit. So you know? I can imagine, uh, cause, uh, I, are, are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Yeah, right. But but you've decided it's, it's different for when when you guys notice that. Are you okay? No, I'm not okay. Yeah, and that's, that's and sometimes I say, yeah, I'm fine. Hello, <laughs> you know. But <laughs> right. she can tell, and she that's that's tell. kind of plant her planting the seed in me yeah. of you're not okay. Right. You know, and and of course, and she, you know what it's like when you've been married a while. She can give you a look, and you know, I just did something not 
that's yeah, not yeah. acceptable. Yeah. So right. I, you kind of do a self check just off of a look. Sometimes we call it a Raymond moment. Yeah. Right. Yeah, right. So, so <laughs> I like that. The, um, what are some of the the places that you that you've gone that you've loved? Um, honestly, I got to be honest, and you'll like this. I, I like the Arkansas state parks more than Texas. Uh, I really do. They're beautiful. Uh, we went to Petty Jean State Park. Mm-hmm. It's beautiful. But in Texas, Paladuro Canyon was a was a pretty awesome place. It's the Grand Canyon of Texas. Yeah, it was really really awesome. Um, there's been there's been quite a few that have been. We've been on 92 trips. Yeah. So, so and, and right now, kind of addressing the people that are listening that go, well, I don't have a travel trailer and I don't have, you know, th- this, I don't have uh, uh, the, the time. When it comes to those kind of state park visits, especially the ones in Arkansas, you, there are cabins out there. Absolutely. So you don't have to drive yeah, a travel you don't have trailer. To. And, and, you know, you don't even have to go to a state park. Like we said before, no matter where you go, yeah. it's about mm-hmm. being with your family. You know, you and I had talked about uh, – uh, some friends of ours that are real into baseball and stuff yep. and how they're all over the country yep. playing baseball. And there's been people that have said things to them like, you're gone too much. Yeah. You know, you, you do too much for baseball. Mm-hmm. You're not, you're, you're depriving these kids of a home life. And, you know, at the same time, that family is always together. Mm-hmm. And so what, what are you doing with the time that you have with your family? Yeah. And that's kind of what I was talking to my friend about was, man, when you're on those road trips, Ask them, be, be engaged with them, exactly. talk about their days, and look for opportunities where you can bring up, well, things of Christ, things of, mm-hmm. of God. I mean, it's they're all over, and you might be surprised that your kids start bringing up stuff to you that you're that kind of takes you back. Like, right, wow. right. Well, yeah. and, you know, uh, my youngest, Wesley, he's a competitive gymnast, mm-hmm. and so we would do those trips just like the, the baseball players would do. Uh, and so when we would go to Dallas or go to Houston – we would uh, make sh- we would plan a little vacation type of element with that right, with that absolutely. trip, and so. But you're right, being able to take those opportunities and uh, say things like uh, just as as they're entering into the the field of competition, right? Say you know, hey, remember you remember it's not whether you do well or not here; it, it's that you're you're being a witness for Christ. That's and, right. And so uh, what you're talking about with and just encouraging your kids to talk about the in the dugout or in the uh, in line between the elements. That's a little bit of a, of a soft, off, off topic uh, necessarily, but it still is that idea of keeping keeping uh, yourself aware right. of what is around. And Absolutely. I think that's the, the one of the biggest parts of, of this idea. Um, so uh, the other thing I want to ask is, um, so again, we're talking about getting away, right? right? And uh, we do think about where to go and uh, what are some of the local uh, parks that you don't have to go and spend the night, but you can go spend the day. I got you. And yes. so what are, give us some suggestions. Well, about obviously it. Tyler state park is a fantastic park with great walking trails, good swimming areas. Yep. Um, that's, I know a lot of people go visit that one, but there's other ones. There's uh Martin's Creek state park, which is about, an hour-ish from Tyler. It's not not a very far drive. Um, you've got, uh, like, Lake Jacksonville has kind of a, just a day recreation picnic area and a swim area yeah. where you can go down there. Really, a lot of – any you, just, you can get on uh, Texas Parks and Wildlife and mm-hmm. look at what's close by. And, and a lot of those offer cabins and stuff if you wanted to stay the night. And they're, a lot of them just have screen shelters to where you can just go and take an air mattress – and yeah. and it's really I think it's thirty bucks for the night. It's not very much. Right. I would suggest doing that in the fall or early <laughs> spring so that you don't bake. Yeah. Um, but you know it doesn't matter. Even even if you just just anything that you can do to get away with your family mm-hmm. um, and, and just isolate yourself from the world. Yeah. To where it's just a lot of one on one time. Even if it is just going to the lake for the day and just swimming and packing a picnic lunch yep. it doesn't have to cost you really anything and but they'll rem- the kids will remember that stuff yep. and then you can use that as a uh, as your platform um you know you and i had talked the other day a little bit about uh, something i heard tony evans say that no matter where you're at it's your platform it's your pulpit what yep. are you preaching yep and you have to be that example to your kids and i know if you're like me you're like 
yeah, well, my kids have seen the side of me that ain't so much the preacher. <laughs> exactly. You know? Right. But with that, they need to understand that, that you're 100% human, too, mm-hmm. that you're going to make mistakes, but we have a Savior that's greater than those mistakes. Yep. And driving that home at a young age I think is important so that they understand, you know, I'm going to mess up, but but God still loves me. And vacations are perfect. Uh, I heard one person say that a, um, a vacation is, or a uh, Going out somewhere is a um, is 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 like life here. It uh, and it was talking about specifically camping. Right. Um, you spend uh, you spend time out camping, and you're away from your home comforts. That's right. And so after a while of being out there, you're like longing for home again. That's right. And um, but the 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 idea is sometimes the struggle mm-hmm. is worth it. And so maybe to encourage. Uh, as we think about going out on vacations, as we think about uh, whatever those vacations are, going out somewhere um, exotic like Paladero Canyon yeah. or going somewhere that's local like Tyler State Park, to be able to um, to say, I'm going to go there with, with, with my mind, with my, with my eyes open to what God's going to do with my family, but then also to be able to say things are going to go wrong and that's okay. And that's okay. Mm-hmm. Um, and part of that struggle is uh, the struggle is worth it. Yeah. And so at the end of it, when you're when you've helped your family process through whatever difficulty that the vacation brought to you, um, we've we've done tent camping at uh, Devil's Den yes. in Ar- Arkansas, and there was there was times where the wind came <laughs> and almost blew the tent down. There were times where the temperature got to twenty nine mm-hmm. degrees. Uh, <clears throat> which is uh, our limit we've yeah. learned yeah that's our cold, cold weather <laughs> way, camping yeah cold weather camping. a lot of people's limits yeah that's right <laughs> um and so but we made it through and we struggled through it and our kids still remember those things absolutely and so so sometimes those bad moments will actually be what the kids laugh about and make fun of you later on for crisis bonding crisis absolutely. let's do that absolutely. crisis bonding that's exactly so what when things are going wrong you can yeah. go hey this is a great opportunity yeah, yay right. yeah well, so I, yeah. <laughs> Does that ever happen? I don't think so. Yeah. So, um, um, I'm now suddenly, this is going to be edited obviously here. Um, I really appreciate you, you coming Not and, a problem. and spending this time with us, Not giving a us some, it's... uh, we want to encourage the, the, the whole thing about this podcast is to encourage, uh, families and encourage families on vacations. And I think some of the things we've talked about have already, uh, they've encouraged me, and I can't help but think that they've encouraged uh, people. So um, thanks, Andy. You're welcome. My my main takeaway for this, for the listeners, would be make the moments count. Oh, wow. Even even if you go through the trip and on the ride home, you're like, you know what, I never... I never really brought up anything about God or Christ. You know what? That's okay. Mm -hmm. You were still building a bond with your family. Yeah. And... The more that you do it, the more you'll start to see those opportunities yep. um, arise. And just make that time count because you get one shot at your kid's childhood. Just one. Yeah. So make it count. Don't uh, don't let it slip through your fingers. Right. I've talked to a lot of people that were elderly who said, man, I wish I could have that time back. Yeah. And so we're here to try to encourage you to yeah. not let that time slip yeah. through your fingers. Don't let summer slip by. Don't let it slip by. Slow down. And enjoy it. Thanks. Yes, sir.